What's up everybody? This is Steve and this is Gopher Toots. In this video I want to talk about something which I haven't really talked about since I started this channel out and that is a special topic which may seem like a very stupid topic. I initially thought I shouldn't do a video based on this topic but for some of you it may be useful. But before we dive into the video just wanted to apologize and say sorry to you guys that I have been missing for a while like it's been like three months since I haven't done anything any content out there and it just feels so weird it feels so so bad I thought I should start back doing videos all right so the topic we're gonna talk about is not gonna be so interesting if you are already into go and you've been programming in go for a while but if you're a beginner then that's the video for you so without further ado zoom and let's get into the video all right guys so in this video I want to demystify what is go path and how exactly you set it up how you can make use of it and how you can just understand how go projects are structured how they work and just understand the nature of Go and uh, you know the mindset of the language and stuff like that. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the structure. I will explain you the structure, but before we jump into the structure, like the folders, how they are organized, where is the source code placed, where are the third party packages placed and stuff like that, uh, we want to quickly go through the installation process, although this video is not about installation. Disclaimer, this video is not about installation. All right guys, so right now I'm gonna jump into my browser and I'm gonna search for how to install Golang. And uh, I'm gonna just type install Golang. And the first page, which it's basically the one, which is from golang.org. And basically you have installation steps here. I'm on a Mac and because I'm on a Mac, I'm gonna show the process how to do it on the Mac. So basically if you're on a different operating system like Linux or Windows, the instructions are pretty simple. Just download the installer or run a certain command if you're on Linux. You could just go for this thing, but just to show you real quick how to do it. So if you have a Mac, you already may be using this tool, Homebrew. It's a pretty nice tool. It's just a, some sort of dependency management for MacBooks. So Homebrew. So just make sure you have Homebrew. I already have Homebrew, but if you don't have Homebrew, just copy paste this link, throw it in your terminal window, and you should have Homebrew. Just jump into your terminal window and just type brew install go. Now, because I already have go installed, it's gonna throw me some sort of error, but it shouldn't be a problem for us. So see, it's trying to update homebrew, whatever. So it says warning, blah, 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 because it's already installed, as I told you. So to check if Go has successfully installed, just type in Go version. And if you type in Go version, you should see something like Go version 1.12.4 or something like that. And that's pretty much it. That's how you install Go on a MacBook Pro. And if you have some other operating system like Windows or Linux, it doesn't really matter just follow the instructions the instructions are simple we are not going to stop too much on installation because this video is not about installation as i told you all right guys so now that we have installed go binary we can run go program so let's go ahead and give go binary another test by running a simple go program let's first go to desktop and let's say vim main.go let's say package main and then func main and inside of this func main let's just Font print mine hello world and just make sure we import this package. We seem to be okay. And now, in order to run a Go program, you should simply just run it, you know, <laughs> just simply go run main.go or whatever the name of the file and it should print out hello world. All right guys, so uh, enough of the hello world programs. Let's go ahead and dive into the go path and see what the heck got generated there by the go binary. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the terminal and see what is going on. Because I'm on a Mac, let's go ahead and open up oh, go path. So we open up go path, we have this small little directory. So we have bin, pkj and source. So basically these two, bin and pkj, you will interact less of these folders. However, you will interact more with source folders. So what exactly is in source folder? Well, in source folder is the source code which you will eventually use in your code. So if you open up source code, we have several things like golang.org, github.com, go uber. Right now let's open up these. But before we open up these, let's figure out what the heck are these names and what are they supposed to mean. Like, uh, I'm gonna tell you that these are hosts. Like, uh, every package out there lives on a host. 
when GoBinary goes ahead to pull off some packages from the internet, it eventually looks for some hosts and, well, that's where the data lives on some hosts. So we have hosts and inside of these hosts, let's say github.com, we have organization slash users. I mean, we could have here stuff like, I don't know, my GitHub username, like Steve Hook, right? spell it right even so github username github organizations and stuff like that we even have gopher toots which is the source code where i'm placing everything for the examples of this tutorial basically that means you don't just get a certain package or module uh, by just you know referencing that you have to go into the host you have to pick up a user and then you have to pick up a package or you have to pick up an organization and then you pick up a package which that organization on github let's say developed so that's pretty much it on how src folder is organized but i promise you to show you a small diagram where i explain it in more details for now let's just go up a couple of folders and let's explore these two so basically what is bin bin it's pretty much is just a place where go stores all its binaries so basically this is the location for binaries we're gonna have an example later and i'm gonna explain you how exactly you get this binary to come here when you run a certain program and how can you access this binary globally from your terminal so that's it on binaries and then we have pkj go behind the scenes uses this place in order to pull packages in your program where you say import a certain package right so as i promised you i'm gonna show you a diagram where i explain that like in a general mode so let's go ahead and dive into the diagram right here we have the go path as we said like the go path is some sort of a root for the project at least if you're not using go modules so then we have stuff like source pkj and bin which i showed you earlier so uh, source pretty much what I explained earlier. We have hosts, we have hosts like github.com, gitlab.com, anything.com. And then we have uh, stuff like users or organizations. So that's how Go distinguishes which package belongs to which user slash organization. And after that, we have the package itself, which is the main source code, which we need. So that's pretty much it on source. So then we have bin. So in the bin, as I said, we have binaries. So I'm gonna show you a quick example when we will explore Go commands, Go basic commands go main commands so then we have pkj so basically here pkj you're not gonna use it too often so basically here you have packages which get downloaded and then linked inside your program when you say import a certain package so that's pretty much it on this diagram i hope it was useful and more clear than my workspace which looks ugly and dirty all right guys so as i promised you let's dive into the main go commands the commands which you will use day by day at least the commands i use on a daily basis so let's go ahead and jump into the terminal and let's explore a couple of commands so let's go ahead and start off with the go env because you know it's a very important stuff to know it's basically the information the metadata about the go binary which got installed what kind of environment variables it's gonna use when it's gonna run certain stuff so let's go ahead and explore this command first so if you type in go env we have things like go arch which basically represents the architecture of the computer go bin which is the location where all those binary live and we have go cache stuff like where the build uh, for the binary is located and many many variables really important variables are go arch because that represents the architecture which uh, you're using currently and you could basically set another architecture another operating system and compile your program for something else on for example running on your machine on your OS X machine you can compile a program on Linux by just simply setting the go arch and go OS variables so play around with those variables and see what happens it's pretty neat it's pretty powerful just set a couple of variables and it all works just like setting go path actually and then you have go bin where those binaries live and then we have go path which I explained earlier and we have several other the variables and like a lot of variables are here and you could have a look here it's pretty important and I think this is an important command so whenever something doesn't work whenever I want to see what's going on with my go environment I just say go env and it shows all the variables and I can have a look what exactly is missing or what should be set or what should be unset in order for something to work properly and to not have bugs and stuff like that so that's it on go env let's jump into the next command which is gonna be go run so let's first go to desktop where was the program which we created earlier so here we have main so if we say go run main.go it's basically gonna do two things it's gonna take this program compile it 
generate a binary in a temporary location which we're gonna have a look where exactly that binary sits and after that executes the binary so let's have a look at go run we have a several different commands so let's say go run but this time we're gonna pass in a flag so let's say work and then I say main.go so when we pass this flag work it's gonna show us the temporary location where the binary is stored so let's quickly copy paste this let's say we copy this and we cd into that location so basically if we do an ls here some sort of b001 let's say cd b001 <clears throat> and after that there is this exe let's go into exe it's basically some directory generated structure by go and here is our executable main right and we can execute this main function we can execute this main binary whatever so this is the temporary location which got generated by go this is what go run does and that's pretty much it on go run so another very important command which you will run on daily basis is go build and pretty much go build is used for like production projects you're gonna use this program for production projects because you don't need to run it right away you just need to compile it and generate the binary for that so that's what go build does so if we jump on our terminal we're on desktop and let's just say go build and when you just say go build it's gonna take your program compile it generate the binary and it's gonna name it after the name of the directory which the file itself is contained in so if you do an ls uh, it's gonna have this uh, desktop so we have desktop and here in red desktop is a binary whatever it's an executable and we just say desktop eventually we don't want to name it that way and we just say go build minus o which is stands for the output and we're gonna name it uh, executable and when we do an ls we're gonna have this executable generated for us and we can just run executable afterwards so the process of running it's up to you it's up to the developer so you just run this executable and everything works perfectly so let's go ahead and see how exactly we can generate our own binary place it in the go bin location and then access it from everywhere from our terminal so i am on desktop currently and let's go ahead and just cd into go path uh, source and i have my username there and it's steve who can here let's make a directory called executable afterwards let's cd into that and let's just copy this file from desktop which we had main.go oops let's copy it over here and we have main.go so right now let's go ahead and run go install and see what happens so we're gonna write go install and seems like nothing happened but if we uh, say open or let's actually say cd go ban and we do an ls let's actually do an ls and let's say grab uh, executable see it found it and if you look inside this list here it is so let's just say executable hello world now let's cd in home and we say executable and it sprints hello world if we cd into desktop and we still decide to say executable to say to run executable still prints so that's how you store a binary inside go bin and you run it everywhere because go bin is eventually inside the path and because it's set inside the path you can basically run any commands uh, generated from any go program so that's how you run go install and that's how you get a binary placed inside go bin and that's pretty much it on go main commands these are the commands i used on a daily basis and these are very useful commands i recommend you learn them remember them run them use them play with them and see what happens have fun and you know enjoy playing and writing code in go all right everyone so that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and you liked writing code of me exploring the go path demystifying the go path call it however you want if you happen to like this video make sure you click that like button if you didn't like this video click this like button and smash that button and also make sure if you're new to this channel to click that subscribe button and also click the bell because otherwise you'll miss other videos which i'm about to make will you really make videos yeah i think
I'm about to make. All of the resources which I used in this video will be linked in the description of this video. Make sure to check that as well. And also especially make sure to check the new GitHub repository which I created. Enjoy it, have fun and keep going on, keep writing Go code and keep being a gopher. So that's it for this video and, and I'll see you next time. Oh,